First, we are examining the behavior of an individual stage. In this case, we have the last stage on the right, because if you want single stages, you have to start on the right. Because if I move it across, it will include more and more stages. So the stages are coupled from left to right. Inserting the plugs on the right uh, separates that one stage from all the others. The green LEDs there show that it is in the major mode or the mode that it goes into when it starts up. It is being triggered at the gate input which is orange by a square wave, a slow square wave. Each time the square wave goes positive it triggers it and the length of time it takes to decay is controlled by the slider. As you can see it's set to about the mid position. There is how the waveform looks on the oscilloscope. A sharp turn on and the length of time with a straight linear roll off. That is with the knob above set to the mid position. If we rotate this knob to the right like so, as you can see, it changes the curve to an inward leaning curve so you get a uh, exponential decay as shown if you rotate the knob the other way to the left there you see now the curve is the other direction so in the middle it's a straight line to the right it dips and to the left it comes up like that if we push this slider up a little bit even a very small amount of touching the slider greatly extends the time as you can see a slight push of the slider down towards you and it becomes a narrow pulse now each of the stages can also be used as an independent LFO with any wave shape you might desire. So let us do that for the very last one here. We have the blue cable coming into the output. And in order to get it to work as an LFO, we need to put it into the looping mode so once again we hold down the button till the uh, LED flashes and we let it go. It's now running as an oscillator and uh, it will be going very slow but we can carry it up now into the audio region so or to the high frequency region so that we can see it on our analog oscilloscope. Now there it is as a sine wave on our analog oscilloscope. Now what we can do is we can rotate the knob the slider sets the frequency okay and the knob sets the shape of the wave so if we rotate it to the right we go through triangle to square so we go square to triangle to sinusoidal to sawtooth so look at that just by rotating the knob we can get all the basic synthesizer shapes that we might desire. Isn't stages wonderful? Six LFOs, a complex envelope generator, several envelope generators if you don't need to have so many segments. What else is hiding underneath the hood? of stages. In this mode the stages is being used 
as a six segment envelope generator. Now you can see that the gate signal is coming in on the leftmost input and the output is coming out on blue. You can also see that the fourth segment is in the hold mode because of the red LED above the fourth segment from the left. When the stages is configured this way the lever on the leftmost sets the attack time whereas the knob above it gives the curve shape. There you can see the six segments. Move the lever for number one. As you can see the attack time has increased. We are now going to turn the knob for stage one to show you how it goes from a linear to a curve. There you can see the curve curving or bowing one way. There you can see the curve bowing the other way. Segment two is always in this case going to be straight line. There is no way we can change curves on segment two. What the knob does it sets the height, how far down it goes or how high up it is. It sets the level. The slider sets the time. As you can see, we have a longer time while it drops. Now for the third segment from the left, we are once again back to being able to use the knob to set the curve shape, either bowing it in or out. There it is bowed one way and there it is bowed the other way. Now the, for the plateau or hold segment, the knob extends the time there it is for a long time and if we rotate the knob in the other direction there it is for a short time and the slider adjusts the level we'll bring it down a little bit there we've brought it down a little bit Finally, on the last segment, we can once again change the shape of the curve with the knob. We have changed the time there, so obviously the angle of the uh, decline is not quite as steep on segment 5. That's done with the slider. Finally, on the last segment, we can once again change the shape of the curve with the knob. As you can see, it's curved downward there and curved the other way there. While the slider shortens or lengthens the time, which in this case is the angle. Now if we want to have it mimic a conventional keyboard ADSR we need to make the hold stage so that it actually can be held indefinitely if we hold down a key. Remember with the CV system and gate system if we press the key and keep it held down, then it's going to stick at the whole sustain stage for as long as we wish. So what turns the hold into a sustain is to hold it down. We hold the button down until it flashes. Just hold it down for a second. 
There, it's flashing now. If I trigger the gate manually and hold it, see what happens. It sticks there on the hold as long as I wish it to stay. Okay? As long as I wish it to stay, I'm holding the key down and when I release the key, it completes the last two, which is the release bar. Each individual stage has three modes and the buttons when pressed cycle through the modes. The green mode is ramp, the red mode is hold and now we've reached the orange mode which is step. So as you can see here we have all of the stages put into the step mode because all the LEDs are orange and we have a trigger signal patched in here with the green cable which is cycling through the various segments and as you can see we have the voltage, the CV level is set with the sliders we have it set in an ascending sequence so as it goes from each segment the voltage gets higher and notice that all the knobs are set to the fully counterclockwise position. What the knobs do in the sequencer is just introduce a little bit of slew or glide from one uh, note or step to the next. So here we have that turned off fully counterclockwise on the knobs and we are going through an ascending sequence which repeats when it reaches to the end. We're taking our output here in the blue cable and putting in our trigger with the green cable. Let's see how it looks on the digital oscilloscope. As expected we have the step sequence coming up and then going back down to the low at the end. There you can see how it looks with the slew or glide engaged instead of getting the um, steep steps it sort of just moves in a curve to the next higher level. On the dot com rig we're taking the oscillator square wave and we're putting it into the signal processor in order to change it from a double sided wave into just a 0 to 5 volts rather than plus or minus 5 volts and then we're sending it through an envelope generator which we have configured and set to turn it into a pulse so that we just get a pulse as you can see there on the light at the beginning of every cycle on the rising edge. Each of the stages or of our stages can function as a sample and hold. We have it in the step mode, we have the slew turned off as you can see fully counterclockwise on the knob and the light is orange meaning that we have it in the step mode and uh, we have white noise coming in here on the yellow cable into the CV input and we have the slider raised just enough to bias it so that we don't get any negative output it's all coming out in the positive but if we push the CV down slider down to the bottom we would get both positive and negative outputs and what we have here on the green cable coming in that is our gate signal so when it goes at positive it samples and holes on each transition and then of course we have the blue cable on the output going to the oscilloscope so we have that is our sample and hole circuit there we have um, the input we have the output and we have the gate 
and as you can see or maybe you can't see too good the little green LED is getting lighter and darker brighter as the higher the voltage coming out which we can now take a look at on the oscilloscope here is the output of our sample and hold as you can see we're getting random stair steps um, all over the place which is what one expects with uh, sample and hold there's another set um, the, we have white noise being fed into the CV input of the last stage 